Good evening. We're glad you joined us to worship the Lord, to thank Him for His goodness, His grace, His mercy, His love. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. So don't give up. Someone really loves you. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. Someone really cares. Don't give up. Someone really loves you. And that someone is the Lord. Beloved, I pray that you're not giving up, that you're pursuing the Lord with all of your heart. You're trusting and believing and hanging on to Him. Sometimes it feels like we're hanging on by our nails, doesn't it? But you know what? He always comes through. Hasn't He proved that to you time after yeah. time after time? Mm -hmm. And if you're a new Christian, a young Christian, you're going to find out if you keep on hanging on to the Lord Jesus. He won't let go of us, and He just wants to show us how powerful He is, how He's able to come through when we need Him the most, and that He is able to deliver us in any situation. Yes. He delivered me out of five times of ending up in a mental ward. Doctor told me I would be, I would just get worse and worse and I'd have to be put away in a mental institution the rest of my life. Well, I'm telling you that for 26 years, I've been free of mental problems, free of mental uh, in incarceration because <laughs> that's what it seems like they lock you up in a hospital or in order to to help you but I can tell you that God has delivered me every time and he's delivered me from so many things especially from fear and worry yes. I've come to know my Lord I've come to know his power his strength his love his mercy his grace and he just becomes more meaningful, more dear to my heart than ever before. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Jesus said to pray like this, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, you are holy, you are righteous, you are loving, you are good. And we praise you. We come into your throne room with thanksgiving and praise. Thank you for this day. Thank you for how far you've brought us. Thank you, Father, that we have an inheritance, that we can look forward to the day when you'll call us home and we'll be home forever. Oh, Father, use us. Might we produce much fruit for your kingdom. Might we have much to to lay at your feet on that day when you call us home. Might we complete the work, the deeds that you have for us to do in the power of your Spirit. We thank you, Father, for Jesus going to that cross yes. and dying for our sin, forgiving us, opening our eyes to the truth that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that we can abide in him and just have a wonderful adventure on this earth as we follow hard after the Lord Jesus in the power of his spirit. 
Thank you, Father. And Father, I pray that those who are listening will be strong in their faith. They won't give up. They won't let their flesh pull them down. They will look to the power of your Spirit in them. And Father, if there's somebody that's listening, that's seeking you, that's wondering what on earth is life all about, why are they here? I pray that today they would understand that you created them for your glory, for your good purpose, and to be part of your family. We love you, Father. We thank you. We thank you for all that you do for us, the many blessings you pour out upon us. And Father, this afternoon, I pray that those who are listening will get their cups full to overflowing. They'll be strong in you. Their faith will be strengthened by your word. And that we can fight the good fight of faith, just the way Paul did. And then, Father, on that day when you call us home, we can say we've fought the good fight. And that we believed and trusted right to the end. Father, we love you. We thank you. We can't thank you enough. Use us for your glory. Might you be glorified and magnified in our lives. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. And isn't it wonderful that when it comes time for us to go home, we won't have to cross Jordan alone. When I come to the river at ending of day, when the last winds of sorrow have blown, There'll be somebody waiting to show me the way. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Thank God. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus died for my sin too. Thank you, Jesus. When the darkness I see, He'll be waiting for me. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Oftentimes I'm forsaken and weary. Seems that my friends have all gone. There is one God that, that cheers me and makes my heart glad. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. All quiet boys.
from Jordan alone. Play it for us. Jordan alone. Jesus Amen. will be there. <clears throat> I remember a friend of ours telling us she watched her husband die and he heard and saw angels calling him home. I tell you, <laughs> what, a, what a promise that Jesus will never leave nor forsake us. Amen. I'm going to give you this, Pastor Nikki. Okay. I want to thank all of you for watching today and uh, want to offer up prayers for some of the requests, Sister Merlene Cantrell. Yeah. We just offer up prayers for you and the family and mm -hmm. thank the Lord for Loretta Webb and all of her uh, encouragement, Steve Robinette, yeah. so many of you. Just want to thank God for you today, and I pray God's blessings upon each and every one of you. I pray that God will bless your coming in and going out. I pray that God will bless your rising up and laying down. From this day forward, let the blessings of God be poured out upon you. Today, I, God has put in my heart to bring forth a message about how that Religious people can do more harm than good sometimes. And Jesus, when he started his ministry, it was the religious people that found fault with him. Everywhere he went, they followed him, trying to find some way of accusing him. Now listen, these, these religious people, they followed the law of Moses, they, they, I mean, they were just very religious and they carried on all the traditions and the things that Moses, God had given Moses to tell them. But they didn't even recognize that the Messiah was standing right there in front of them. Mm -hmm. We're living in a time where people don't seem to realize that God is right here with us. Mm -hmm. And that we... We run to and fro trying to find answers. And we're not happy unless we have the answer. But let me say this to you today. That if you have to have the answer, then you're not living by faith. Yeah. And the Bible says that the just will live by faith. Jesus said, when I come back, will I find any faith? And you know... <laughs> He's going to find some of his people with faith. He's going to find some that truly believe. We don't have to see in order to believe. Jesus said, blessed are those that believe and have not seen me. But I want to, I want to give you the story. It's not a story. It's out of the word of God. That there was a baby born to a man and woman. And this baby was born blind. And since he was a baby in his mother's womb, he had been blind. And the Bible says in the book of St. John, the ninth chapter, that Jesus healed this blind man. He was a man. He had grown up all of his life, never laid his eyes on mama or daddy or the sunrise, or the sunset. Never seen anything. All he knew was darkness. 
We're living in a time where people are living in darkness, spiritual darkness. That's true. But Jesus, on the Sabbath day, saw the need. And he healed this blind man, young man, that had been blind from birth. Now the religious people, they saw what happened on the Sabbath day, and they thought, well, it's all right to go play a game of golf or go catch a fish, but it's not all right to give somebody their eyesight on the Sabbath day. Is that not religion? Religious people will destroy faith. We, and I say this with love, because we've got to get to the point in these last days to where we start walking with God and His Son, Jesus Christ. We've got to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost. We've got to operate in the power of the Spirit of God. And we can't operate in our own reasoning. We can't operate in religion. We have to operate with a relationship. Listen, walking with God is not religion. Walking with Jesus is a relationship. And that's what Jesus wants. He said, Knock and it shall be open. Seek and you will find. We've got to get hungry for Jesus Christ. We've got to get hungry for... The, the spiritual gifts that that God has for each and every one of us. Amen. So when they they came, they came, they found fault, and they started questioning this boy, who done this? And he said, "I don't know." They called him Jesus. But let's start reading in the ninth chapter, the tenth verse. The Pharisees are questioning. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and I washed and I received my sight. Oh, if we could just understand that if we would obey the Spirit of God, that we could see miracles. We could see more miracles today than we've ever seen before if we would simply be in obedience to the Spirit. It didn't make any sense for this blind man to go and wash in a pool, but he did. He said, I went and I washed. I obeyed what this man called Jesus told me to do. And he said, I've received my sight. And I want to say this today. With all of my heart, this man had never seen anybody. Not his mom and dad didn't know what day and night was all about. Everything stayed black. I know that the first thing the blind man seen was the Lord Jesus. And you know, I just want to see Jesus too. Yeah. We sang this song, I won't have to cross Jordan alone. I know that when one of God's little ones, when one of Jesus' disciples, and by the way, we are supposed to make disciples, people that will follow Jesus. The Bible says that when one of us, one of us have to cross over to the other side, that God's going to provide the comfort that we need. Amen. Pastor Nikki was talking about how God delivered her of fear. And, you know, I thank the Lord that since we've been married, she's not had any kind of a mental shutdown. I don't worry about that because I know that the problems that she was having before we met was spiritual instead of mental. I want to say this today, that Satan is attacking our, our mind and the way we think and the way we do things. And I praise God that I have a wife that has become so spiritual and so close to Jesus. She's in love with him, and that's perfectly fine with me. 
as long as she's in love with Jesus, then I know she's going to be in love with me. And that just really uh, tickles me. I don't mind sharing her with God at all. God, God, take all of Nikki and just let me have whatever you want me to have. And I'll be happy. But this blind man said, where is he? Where is this man called Jesus? And the blind man said, I don't know where he is. The 13th chapter, they brought him to the Pharisees, him that was aforetime was blind, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. What a great day to see a miracle Mm -hmm. would be on the Sabbath day, on the Lord's day. I tell you what, instead of everybody being happy and having a good time, the religious people was trying to find fault. And then again the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Therefore some of the Pharisees said, This man, Jesus, is not of God, because he keeps not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? Yeah, I'd like to know that myself. And there was a division among them. I'm going to tell you, Jesus Christ, there will be division over him. Some people will think that we're radical if we are just totally in love with the Lord. Some people will think we're of the devil if we have gifts of the Holy Ghost, like speaking in tongues or or shouting or or singing in the Spirit. Uh, you know, they'll say that we're of the devil. But you know what? The Bible is true. It says that God imparts the spiritual gifts to those that pleases Him. And so I don't believe, I know that nothing God does is of the devil. No. Mm-hmm. Nothing that God does is wrong. God cannot sin. God cannot lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, he's not of God. He doesn't keep the Sabbath day. Others said, well, if he's such a sinner, how can he do these miracles? They say unto the blind man again, boy, they just keep questioning him. They just keep, instead of being thankful and say, boy, I'm glad you can see. Boy, what a miracle. Oh, oh, I'm so happy you can see. They're trying to find out what happened to him. And they said unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that's opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Well, we know Jesus is more than a prophet. But I tell you, a prophet was really acknowledged in those days. A real prophet, a real prophet was highly esteemed except by religious people. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight, so they called the parents of him that had received his sight, and they asked them, saying, Is this your son? who you say was born blind, how does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son. Hey, this is our son. He was born blind. We took care of him. We raised him up, and we had to lead him to different places. He couldn't see how to take care of himself. We know this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we don't know. We don't know. Or who opened his eyes? We know not. He is of age. He's old enough. He's a young man. Ask him. He'll speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Folks, I want to say this to you today. There's so many of us that are living in fear 
And we, we, you know what? We need to openly confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah sent, the Savior of the world, that he took our sins upon his body, that he was nailed to the old rugged cross, and that they, they made fun of him, they beat him, yeah. they, they, they whooped him so bad that he wasn't even recognizable as a man. His face was tore up so bad. His back was tore up so bad. The flesh was ripped from his back and his legs. And Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, we should be proud to tell someone that Jesus died for me, that Jesus died for you. And we should do it in a manner of love and we should do it in a way that we want to see that person go to heaven and not to hell. Amen. Oh, beloved, we need to be soul winners. We need to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Amen. But I'm going to say this today. The 24th verse, they called the man back. They had been questioning him and questioning him. They say, they called again the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man, Jesus, is a sinner. And the blind man that had received his sight answered and said, I don't know whether he's a sinner or not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. I want to say this today about myself. I know that this Jesus is real because he changed my life. He changed my way of living. He filled me with his spirit, the Holy Ghost and fire. He gave me some of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And I have been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ since I was 43 years old. And now I'm turning 77. And I want to give Jesus the praise and the honor and the glory. Because once I was spiritually blind. Yeah, me too. And there's people I'm talking to, to today. You may be spiritually blind. And Jesus wants you to see. And if you'll come to him. And just as simple as this. Say, Lord, I want what you have for me. I want to fulfill my destiny. I want all that you have planned for my life to be. I'm ready to receive whatever. I'm going to tell you, he's going to open those blind eyes. Amen. And you're going to see the truth that a relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing in your life. Yes. And it's going to determine eternity in your life. Amen. It's going to determine what God has for you when you cross Jordan Amen. and you won't cross it alone. Amen. So I'm going to say today, is Jesus speaking to your heart? He's ready to open your eyes. He's ready to forgive you of your sins. He is ready to take you in his arms he is ready to protect you. He is ready to fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. He is ready to make you a disciple and a witness for Jesus Christ in this lost and dying world. Would you come to him today? Amen. What have you got to lose? What have you got to lose? you got to believe him even though you can't see him. He said you'll be blessed if you believe and you've not seen. Amen. And Christian, today I'm speaking to you. It's time to quit playing. Let's make a deal with God. God is not going to negotiate with you on those terms. Amen. It's time for you to say and mean it. I am all in. And I want a relationship with Jesus. I want what I've never had before. I want to be able to go to bed at night and sleep. I don't want to worry about a job. I don't want to worry about food on my table. 
I don't want to worry about anything. I want to be filled with the Spirit, and I want to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. And He'll do it. Yes. He'll do it. As we close today, we're going to sing this old song. Since Jesus came into my heart. Keep us in your prayers. We love you, beloved. We want to be with you. All of us gathered together when God gathers his people home. Amen. What a wonderful change in my life. How has since Jesus came into my heart. I have life in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Hallelujah. A jump joy for my soul like the sea billows roll. Oh, to see you tomorrow. Bye for now.